Hey what's up guys, welcome to How To Do Computers, I'm Mike and today we'll be setting up a very important part of our home lab, the domain controller. For this I'll be using a trial version of Windows Server 2019. I'll add a quick side note here, per Microsoft's documentation, if you use a trial version of Server 2019 to set up a domain controller, and you later on decide to purchase a license, you won't be able to apply it to that server. You'll need to install a new instance of Server 2019 to a new machine, and then transfer the role from the old domain controller to the new machine. Just keep that in mind moving forward. So here we've got a machine that we want to set as our domain controller. You'll want to make sure that all updates are installed, that the computer has an appropriate name, and it has a static IP address with the primary DNS pointing to localhost 127.0.0.1. If you don't know how to set all that up, I'll link my videos down below on installing and configuring Windows Server 2019, as well as installing virtual machines in Proxmox if you aren't up to speed on that. So here we're logged in as the local administrator to the machine that we want to become our domain controller, and we have the server manager pulled up. Our machine already has a name, srv-dc01, and a static IP that we've set to 192.168.1.250. So first we're going to add the Active Directory role by going to the top right, clicking Manage, and then Add Roles and Features. I like to set this page to Skip by default. Hit Next. We'll be doing a role-based or feature-based installation, so hit Next. Here the local server is already selected. If the server is part of a pool, you'll want to make sure that the right server is selected. Hit Next. Here under Roles, we'll check the options for Active Directory Domain Services. Hit Add Features. And then we'll also want to check DNS server, and then add features again. Hit next. We won't be adding any additional features right now. Hit next again. And for now we won't be integrating with Azure Active Directory. So next again. Next once more. And then here we'll click install to begin the installation of the roles. If you like, you can close out of this window and then check the progress in the top right under the tasks icon. And now we will wait for that to finish. After a few minutes, it will complete the role installation. Go ahead and click on the Add Roles and Features option here. And then on the window that pops up, click Promote this server to a domain controller. Here we can choose to add the domain controller to an existing domain, add a domain controller to an existing forest, or to add a new forest. As we currently don't have a domain set up, we'll choose the last option to add a new forest, and then we'll give it a name. I'll call mine test.lab. Go ahead and hit Next. We'll leave these settings as default for now and give it a restore mode password. Make sure that this password is stored somewhere safe like a password manager as it could be required to retrieve or restore data from your Active Directory. Then click next. Since the domain controller is also acting as a DNS server, you can simply click next here. A NetBIOS name will automatically be generated. It's recommended to leave this as the root domain, so I'll leave it as is and click next. Here you can change the location of your AD databases if you need to. I'll leave them as default and then click next. And then here, give it all a once over and make sure everything looks right. You can also click on view script to see a PowerShell script that you can use to deploy this configuration if you like. I'll go ahead and close that back out and then click next. It'll take a few moments here to check and make sure that all the prerequisites are present. After that, you'll click install and it will begin installing the required services which may take a few minutes, and then the server will automatically reboot to apply the settings. This could take a while as well, so I'll go ahead and skip ahead to after the installation and reboot. Once the installation is complete and you've rebooted, you can go ahead and log back in with the local admin credentials, as the local admin will be promoted to a domain account. Once the Active Directory services are installed, you should be able to find them in the Start menu under Windows Administrative Tools. I like to go ahead and pin Active Directory users and computers to the start menu and to the taskbar, as I tend to access it often on a domain controller. One last thing I'll do is open up the Active Directory users and computers, and then I'll make a domain account for use with various functions of the domain, like adding computers and so forth. I also like to make sure to change the view settings to allow for advanced features, as it allows you to change all available options in the properties of any of the given properties menus. So go ahead and go to our forest, which is test.lab, and then I will right click, go to new, and create a new organizational unit. 
I will call that Home Lab. And this just helps me keep things a bit more organized. How you organize your Active Directory is up to you. And now we'll right click on Home Lab, go to New, and create a new user. And I'll call them Home Lab Admin. And the logon name will be hladmin at test.lab. Next, go ahead and give them a password. And then I'll uncheck user must change password and check password never expires. Microsoft recently updated its security best practices to involve not allowing passwords to expire. So if you want to read more about that, I'll drop a link in the Microsoft doc in the description. But this is absolutely an informed decision. Go ahead and click next. And finish. Now we'll right click on the new user and then go to properties. And then go up to the member of tab. Hit add and then type domain admin. Hit check names to ensure the spelling is correct, and then OK, and then apply. There are a myriad of options in the properties menu for a user. I intend on going more in depth into this in a future video, but for now, we've done all we need to to create a new domain admin account. So hit OK to close out of here, and then we can close back out of Active Directory users and computers. So now we have a domain controller with Active Directory services set up and ready to use in our home lab. So that about wraps it up for now. Next up, we'll be going over adjoining client machines to the domain, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, let me know down below in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.